Uh oh, why am I inspecting my bulkhead? If you're not aware, there's been a bit of a fiasco happening in the sailing circles, especially for uh, the Lagoon 450 catamaran. There's been some bulkhead issues. This video is not going to touch on any of the 450 issues. I don't own a 450, I'm not following it super closely, but I am aware that there has been some issues with this manufacturer, Lagoon, I have never opened this up before, but I'm gonna have a look at our main bulkhead right here. Let's see what we find. So the reason we decided to make this video was that we have had so many questions about our bulkheads. So, so many. many. Every video gets many, many comments about our bulkheads. And we thought we'd just share with you what our experience has been with our Lagoon 410. The Lagoon 410 is of a different era and it's a completely different style than the Lagoon 450. We have filmed this a few times now. <laughs> she just jumped out of bed, it's pretty high, and she landed on her feet. I think I have to preface this with boats, and especially catamarans, need to be taken care of, and especially when it comes to the bulkheads. You see, a catamaran sits on top of the water, whereas a monohull will sit, sit more deeper in the water. So when you're in rough seas and heavy seas, that catamaran will flex and pitch and roll and get slammed. This all means to say that there's a lot of wear and tear on a catamaran because it is a wide platform. I'm gonna go through the boat, show you what's happened over the years. I'm not defending Lagoon. I am not slamming Lagoon. I think uh, Lagoon could have done a better job. I also think that uh, if they do a better job, there's likely gonna be a higher price tag on these boats. I could buy a performance cruiser with a lot of carbon in it, but then again, I'm gonna spend millions on that. And I'd rather spend my money spending more time out here sailing and living the lifestyle that I love. So today we're gonna inspect the bulkheads on the Lagoon 410, which is this boat, and we're gonna talk about kind of why bulkheads are important, why you should inspect them, and what can go wrong. Okay. It's actually pretty simple to take out this door frame. Whoa! It's actually simpler than I thought. I should probably start off with what is a bulkhead. A bulkhead is simply a rib that goes across the boat, so that's the front of the boat, that's the after the boat, and a bulkhead goes sideways across the boat to give the boat rigidity when it's in seas and pitching and rolling. So I'll show you what it looks like and on right here. So this piece of wood right here is our main bulkhead. And it looks pretty good. If you go all the way around, it's one solid piece of I think three quarter inch ply and even up here it's just soaked in resin and uh, looking pretty solid. After sailing over halfway around the world we landed in Thailand. That was over two years ago. Back then the plan was to fly home, pop out a baby and continue on our travels. But this pandemic hit so our plans went out the window. Now we're returning to our boat to continue on our circumnavigation with two under two. Wish us luck, we're gonna need it. So I'm down here in our portside hull and I'm gonna show you a few different bulkheads. There are many different kinds of bulkheads. There are fireproof bulkheads, there's waterproof bulkheads, there are bulkheads simply for habitation to segregate a hull. There are Longitudinal bulkheads. This is an example of a possible longitudinal bulkhead. Uh, it goes, this is our port side, and it goes all the way down to the aft of the boat. We've actually had less problems on the port side of our catamaran because I think there is more, more walls, more bulkheads, and more longitudinal bulkheads than on the starboard side, which is the owner side, and it's more spacious and open. This is our main bulkhead on the port side. In front of that, we have a waterproof bulkhead, which is only accessible from the top, similar to this hatch. And then in front of that is a crash box. So a 
bulkhead and then a small area which is only accessible via a tiny little porthole and that would contain some water on a say a medium impact mid-ocean. Now down here where our battery bank is we have a series of partial bulkheads that go just to the top of the floor. You'll see one right here, there's one right there and then there's one back there. These are critical but not as critical as the main bulkhead. Now what Lagoon does for gluing these in is uh, exactly that. They use glue at times. Let me show you. What Lagoon does with some of their bulkheads is they actually just glue them in with a type of putty. It's usually about a brown kind of putty and over the years with the flex and the thrashing and heavy seas that putty breaks and eventually you end up with too many of these non main bulkheads that are broken. I've now glassed most of mine and I found many of them cracked. Yeah, the last few passages we did in 2019, the person sleeping down here, this is our, our bedroom, the owner's side, uh, would hear, that person down here would hear this ticking noise. It was like a, a tick, 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 and it wasn't consistent. And we thought it was like something dangling off the rail or something, something upstairs. And it turns out it's uh, cracked. I wouldn't even call it a bulkhead. It's just some fiberglass that's come loose. Um, they use uh, this brown putty, this gray putty, to, to join cabinetry, to join pieces of wood to the hall. And it ends up breaking when you do a lot of passage making, when you go long distances. So what I've done in a lot of parts of the boat is, is dig the gray putty out and replace it with actual fiberglass tape and resin. In the end, our boat's gonna be maybe, I don't know, 20 pounds heavier, 10 pounds heavier. Um, but it's going to be a lot more solid of a boat. So I'm feeling pretty good about Nahoa these days. Um, I think she's going to be a rock solid boat going forward. It's hot today and it's a boat work day. So we're having a blast tearing things apart, making giant messes. And you know, I, you know, I'd rather than put away the dishes, I just move them over because we're a bit lazy today. Do you like fiberglass? Where's this conversation going? <laughs> Let me guess, you're holding the camera. To the viewers of Noah. Now be positive, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what time of night is it? You ever seen that show called What's it called? Klondike Gold or something like that. You ever seen that? <laughs> That's like this boat right now. Everything is breaking or rotting or whatever. He made a nice pretty beveled edge. Let's see it. Yeah, so this corner has a new bead of epoxy in it and I'm gonna do another layer with fiberglass and more epoxy on top of that. What do you think, Ash? Solid? Um, it's sexy. Yeah, what are you saying? You said sexy. fiberglass is sexy? Sexy solid. I was saying to Ashley just last night that, wow, our boat is kind of tricked out in the last year. It's um, a lot of stuff has come aboard that's really nice equipment. Uh, we now have this water maker, which is 200 liters an hour. We have air conditioning going in right up here. Um, and all these things are, are kind of, you know, essential to a cruising, offshore cruising cat, but they're also, some of them are nice to have, like the air conditioning. Um, very nice to have when you have children. But with the water maker, um, we've had to install the membranes in the floor. The membranes are simply what f separate the salt water from the fresh. They're like basically huge filters, uh, which work under high pressure. And in order to accommodate those, uh, we've had to cut into uh, these partial bulkheads down here. I wasn't too worried about this when we first started, but um, after we got lifted out here in Thailand, I started to notice a few cracks around these. And again, this is something that every boat owner should do. They should get in there with a flashlight and start inspecting 
their bulkheads. They should inspect every little piece of their boat if they're going to take it offshore to see if it's changed, to see if anything's broken, to see if anything needs to be upgraded, to see if anything has moved. So what we're going to do is we're going to gloss up all the way around the outside, gloss this whole bottom bulkhead or this partial bulkhead so that it makes it stronger than before. Inspect your boat, use a hammer to listen, use a flashlight to look, and be one with your boat. You're a sea person if you're going to go sail around the world. You're a seaman, a sea woman, and you need to be able to fix and attend to these issues as they come up. And they will come up. Unless you have a multi-million dollar boat built all out of carbon fiber, you're going to have bulkhead issues. So that's my two cents on bulkheads. Get them dealt with early. Uh, fiberglass them in early if you can. Um, and if you can't, or if they've already broken, fix them, gloss them. I don't know any other catamaran. Nico is the only catamaran we've ever owned, but we really didn't do any, we didn't do a lot when we first moved on board. We basically set sail with her stock, but there are several things that we've done along the way. Uh, we have taken this boat all the way down to New Zealand, which is some higher latitude sailing. We have experienced some really heavy weather. But the main bulkhead in this boat has never had any issues. Uh, even with the storms and all the miles we put on her, Naho is still solid. But we have had to, to take care of a lot of little things. And um, it's, it's partly, and it's because of the way they're built. At the end of the day, we love our lagoon. And I think all lagoon owners typically love their boat. It's a great boat. It's got a great layout. She sails reasonably well, especially this older model. Um, and they're built reasonably well. Now, there are better boats on the market that are carbon boats that have partial carbon in them. Um, and they are a performance cruiser and they handle heavy weather better. They also cost way more than we could afford. And for us to get out here and do what we have done on this boat, is fantastic. I feel great about our boat. I feel completely safe on our boat. One thing I want to add is we've seen a lot of charter catamarans out here um, sailing the same routes we have and it turns out that pretty much across the board every production boat whether it's an FP, a Leopard or whatever it is they often have these bulkhead cracking things and it's just it's just a I think it's just a factor of the sailing that we're doing, the storms we're encountering, and the fact that things shift as you're cruising, you get slammed and yeah, the putty cracks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know that it's, it's not the integral piece holding your boat together, but we do fix all those cracks. <laughs> if I were to do this all over again, I would literally take the Lagoon catamaran from the factory and epoxy and reinforce all bulkheads before I set sail. The putty does not hold up that they use for putting in you know the minor bulkheads and um, Catamaran MP uh, they have done that from the very get-go. It's a Lagoon 440 I believe and you can check them out on his blog. They do an occasional YouTube video as well. Super great, great resource for Lagoon owners and um, really interesting how he set us up because he knew exactly how he wanted to sail it right from the very beginning and I think we were we just weren't as educated and didn't know what we know then now naive. So, yeah, like, we the, were. <laughs> like the term is naive <laughs> we weren't as experienced is the thing right yeah so now we have a lot more experience under our belt we have experience with uh, this type of production catamaran and we would definitely look at certain things when we're buying it you know know what you're gonna do when you when you get it he could use an app so yeah, this is not a paid advertisement for Lagoon. We don't owe Lagoon anything. They don't owe us anything. We are not affiliated with Lagoon. We do sell their product. Sale, not sell. <laughs> and uh, we don't intend on having any biased opinion. This is simply our, us and our experience and showing you some of the vulnerabilities in our boat. We're probably gonna be in production catamarans uh, in our budget for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot afford a 60 foot trimaran. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Bodie? Do you like our boat? Yeah. Slobber mouth. <laughs> right, see you guys next week. Bye for now.
So I have barely been on the boat in the last month. It's been crazy. Uh, I've been dealing with these two munchkins. Uh, this one's grown like a weed. She talks now, like very demanding all of a sudden. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun in the last month, but it hasn't been with Ben and it hasn't been on the boat. So we're really looking forward to a change in life as we know it because, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful because of the progress we've been seeing on the boat, but it's also been a bit hard. And uh, we can't wait to get the family kind of brought back together and I can talk to Ben without his head lay down over FaceTime at 11 o'clock at night. That'd be nice. <laughs> Next update will be from us bobbing out there at anchor. Can't wait for that. <laughs> I cannot wait to stop working on this boat and actually enjoy it. it seems like it's been like a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hard. <laughs> Self-inflicted. <laughs>